Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this video what we're going to do is we're going to go over the menu items that are in the LCD. Now different MPP products or rebranded MPP products are going to have different menu options because of the size of the inverter and so on. In this particular one I have a 2400 watt inverter and what we're going to do is going to go through each one of the selections step by step so that we have a better understanding of how to program this particular inverter. In order to get to the escape menu, you're going to hold down the far right button for about five seconds until this will show up. Okay, once you hit the down arrow, you'll have in the menu box, you'll have number one. This is where you can program the priority for your inverter. You'll have three selections. One, is SOL, the second one is UTI, and the last one is SBU, which I have programmed for mine. We'll start with UTI because that's pretty straightforward. When you have it programmed in UTI, that's basically saying that you're just going to use utility. That's all that means. However, when you're programming in SOL and SBU, there's a bit of a difference between the two. They work pretty much the same way except that SOL is solar priority and SBU means that you're forcing it to go into battery mode when you're using uh, that particular priority. In SOL mode, when you have that program in that manner, what will happen is once your PV arrays are not producing any solar, it automatically goes back into utility. It's the same as if you reach the point on your programming on number 12 if that also goes below that value, it will also go back to utility. On SBU, however, it will force the unit to use the battery first before it goes to utility. Okay, in menu number two, this is basically where you program how many amps your battery is going to be charged at. So there's several different values in here. I, I program mine to have the maximum amount of amperage going to the battery. Okay, number three, what you're doing is you're selecting ups or appliance. What that means is that you want the voltage to say a particular level when switching between solar, battery, or your grid um, AC. Okay, in selection number four, we have the enable or disable the power saving mode. In this particular one, what will happen is if you enable it, then it'll put the unit into a semi-sleep mode so that whenever you're using power, it'll have to kind of wake up if it reaches a particular voltage. Okay, in number five, you have two selections, AGM and user. If you have anything other than AGM, you want to go to user so that you can preset your specifications. In some cases, even the AGM, you might have to actually go to user because you want exact specifications for that AGM battery. Okay, in selection number six, you have the ability to disable or enable the auto restart in case there's an overload. In my case, it's enabled just so I will, if I'm not there, it will automatically restart on its own. Number seven is similar to number six. It's both enable and disable. In my case, it's enabled. In case there's an over temperature, my inverter will restart itself automatically. When you reach selection number nine in this particular inverter, what you can do is you can program the frequency depending on what country you're in. It could be 50 or 60. In my case, it's 60. In number 11, what you do here is you can adjust the amount of amperage you want charging the battery coming from the utility itself. In selection number 12, this is the one that has to deal with program one where it points back to utility or solar first. What I like to look at this as is where do you want it to stop using the battery? So in other words, if you only want to use 50% of the battery, what is that value? You can program that here. Number 13 is kind of the opposite. In this particular case, once the battery's gotten a fairly good charge, when do you want the unit to start using battery again? Say for instance, if the sun is not shining and you're not getting anything from the PV. 
when do you want it to use the battery again? Okay, number 16, what you're doing is you're selecting the charger source priority. You have four choices. I use CSO where I'm only using solar uh, and it'll only go to utility if solar is not available. You have CUT, which is basically utility only. You have SNU, where you're using solar and utility at the same time. And you have OSO, which basically is solar only charging. Number 18 is simple. It's either on or off. It basically enables the alarm feature to let you know if there's been a fault or something of that nature. So two selections, on or off, on number 18. In number 19, basically you're enabling or disabling the auto return to the main screen of your LCD display. I like mine set so that it stays where I left it last. That way I don't have to keep switching back and forth. In number 20, you have two selections, on or off. That means the backlight's either going to be on or off and only comes on when you press a button. In number 22, it beeps while the primary source is interrupted. So in other words, when something happens, the inverter is interrupted for whatever reason, there will be a beep. You can turn that off if you like. Okay, number 23, the default is bypass disabled. Basically what this does is if there's an overload in the inverter, it will allow it to bypass the system so that you can go strictly into AC grid. Uh, in my case, I keep it as a default disabled um, because I don't need to. You can also set it to enable so that you can just continue using the grid if you like. Okay, number 25, you have two selections, enable and disable. Basically, this is where you can record any faults that the inverter may experience, so either on or off. Okay, number 26, this is where you can program your bulk charging voltage. In my particular case, a gel battery, I'm at 29.2 volts. It may vary in case you have a different battery. In 27, this is where I program my float voltage. In my case, again, the gel battery is at 27.6 volts. Yours may also differ. Okay, number 29, it's fairly important that you understand what this one is. This is where you set your low voltage cutoff. So in other words, this is the lowest point you want your battery to go to. Okay, number 38, I honestly don't have anything on documentation for that, so I don't know what it is. Uh, if there's anybody out there that can help me out with that, that would be great. Thank you. Well, we're right back to number one on the menu. That concludes our quick tutorial on this particular inverter regarding its LCD menu. If you have any comments, please comment on the section below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you.